Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear ministers, researchers, it is a great pleasure for me to be in this summit, particularly coming as I come from Paris uh, to the most wonderful place in the world. I'm not going to refer to Uganda, <laughs> but to my hometown, Addis. Allow me to begin by thanking the government of Ethiopia for hosting this important event. I would also like to thank Professor Sandberg and the team from the Merck Group, our principal partner, in organizing the second edition of the UNESCO Merck Africa Research Summit. I appreciate the opportunity to share UNESCO's views on what I consider to be one of Africa's critical development challenges, building viable scientific and research capabilities to address our health priorities, as well as to enable us to significantly participate in the pharmaceutical industry that is vital in strengthening human resources and in institutions of life and medical research. Healthy populations, ladies and gentlemen, are absolutely essential for the advancement of human development, well-being, and economic growth. This is articulated in the Goal 3 of the Sustainable Development Goals, which the international community has adopted last year, which states clearly the fundamental importance of health for all people, regardless of gender, age, or socioeconomic status. In the post-2015 world, the agenda for global health must change. It must address not just the proximate causes of illness and diseases, but the fundamental social, economic, and environmental determinants of health. And I want to underscore the importance of scientific research to tackle these challenges. It is now clear that lack of science, technology, and innovation capacity has hindered the attainment of several of the Millennium Development Goals, which we just completed before 2015. There are two key areas which must be addressed now to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. First, the lack of local capacity to perform high-quality research on neglected health needs. And secondly, the ineffectiveness of current mechanisms for transferring research into health solutions which can be disseminated to those most in need. I would like to highlight the importance of these two aspects of health and development, including the actions we take on health through broad international and intersectoral cooperation and enabling scientific research in the life sciences and health to drive the performance of health systems. Progress in these areas will be characterized by aligning diverse stakeholders. What we need is a genuine partnership, in particular the kind of partnership represented here today between the public and the private sectors grounded in the belief that the fruits of scientific endeavor and innovation should be equitably shared. And here I want to pay special tribute to the role of both the University of Cambridge Africa Initiative and the Institute Pasteur in providing the strategic directions in scientific research that are taking place globally. UNESCO in its part is involved in a number of international projects to propagate research excellence in the life sciences. Prizes such as the Equatorial Guinea Prize for Life Sciences and the Carlos J. Finlay Prize in Microbiology are driven by global participation, enabling scientists performing innovative research from all countries to engage with the international scientific community. A key part of UNESCO's mandate is the promotion of gender equality in science and everything else. Enabling women to train as researchers, scientists, or other research personnel is crucial in countries with 
shortages of these professionals. When striving for creativity and excellence in research and innovation, the potential of over half of the workforce cannot be disregarded or ignored. The L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science program has been running since 1998. Recognizing one of the exceptional women scientists from each country, each continent, sorry, every year, as well as funding 15 pro promising young female scientists. Two of these laureates have gone to receive the Nobel Prize, and fellowship has been granted to over 2,000 women in 110 countries, enabling them to pursue their research, making their program a benchmark for scientific excellence on an international scale. UNESCO also runs more geographically focused program and supporting sustainable development in Africa, which is our global priority. Today, Sub-Saharan Africa accounts for 11% of the global population, but bears 24% of the world's disease burden. These are Severe, there are severe shortages of scientists, researchers, trained medical personnel. Sub-Saharan Sub Africa is said to have only 3% of the world's health workers, which excludes the bigger portion of African professionals that continuously leave the continent in the form of brain drain. It is therefore no wonder that the level of research and development is extremely low in Africa in the range of 0.05% of global output. While life science and medical research and authorship of scholarly scientific work is almost negligible. These factors ultimately explain the cycle of disease burden, poverty, and low life expectancy in Africa, which for the most part remain commonly based and non-value-added economies. Africa's development as an international hub of research, excellence, and scientific innovation will not only require research institutions and funding, but also a critical mass of young researchers. The importance of science in education, in creating research leadership, is recognized in UNESCO's Education Strategy for Africa. Promoting science education at all levels is also intertwined with gender equality in science, as attendance rates are lower amongst girls, and they are less likely to pursue science subjects, and this is a key area where improvements can and must be made. UNESCO has worked with the mem member states of the African Union on science, technology, and innovation a strategy for Africa. And before that, on the Consolidated Plan of Action for Science and Technology and with individual countries to support the formulation of national science policies. These activities strengthen the impact of research and innovation through regional and international cooperation, university industry partnership, a focus on science education, and facilitating exchange between scientists and government to drive evidence policy making. UNESCO is also committed to responsible, high-quality scientific journalism. Science journalism, excuse me. We recognize training for media professionals and have established a global network of television producers. This network places particular emphasis on HIV AIDS and other infectious diseases. And the African branch has produced documentaries on the subject which were freely distributed for public audience for raising awareness. Other major initiatives in public engagement are our international years. The International Year for Crystallography in 2014 involved schools and other groups of children around the world in activities raising awareness and developing understanding about a vital scientific discipline. These efforts by UNESCO are a small part of the overall picture, ladies and gentlemen. Our understanding of how to harness the power of knowledge, innovation, and creativity for population health and sustainable development has never been better. 
The changing health agenda raises new global and interconnected challenges which cannot simply be overcome with if the public and private sector remain separate. Fully functioning health systems require collaborations that sort of, <coughs> excuse me, the collaborations of the sort UNESCO and the Merck Group are currently undertaking. The private sector provides enormous employment opportunities globally. Besides medical professionals, this industry continuously creates demand for thousands of scientists and researchers, clinical technicians, ICT professionals, sales and marketing staff, as well as health insurance providers, among many other opportunities. The good news is that the situation in Africa has been changing and Africa has been in the move in the right direction, with a broader consolidation of peace and stability, paying good socioeconomic dividends, and it, we need to continue to capitalize on this. Africa's youth is also making their marks in international forums and conferences. Without the passion and energy of youth, we will not go far enough, and that's why it gives me great pleasure to see a large number of scientific researchers representing over 30 countries in Africa present here amongst us. It is a chance for them to interact with one another and network on the top peaks of the summit. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with the commitment of all of us, I'm convinced that we will be able to address the critical issue at hand on infectious diseases and in doing so, contribute to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Agenda for 2030. I thank you very much.